please remain standing for today's prayer. Gratitude and blessings for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us and particularly for the successful execution of this initiative. Heavenly Father, may you continue to bless us all and bless our nation. Amen. Please be seated. The Honorable Kazim Hossein, Minister of Rural Development and Local Government. The Honorable Adrian Leons, Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Works and Transport. Ms. Sonia Francis Yearwood, a Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Transport, or the Permanent Secretaries and Deputy Permanent Secretaries. His Worship Junior Agrello, Mayor of San Fernando, and other supporting councillors and representatives from the San Fernando City Corporation. Senior officials of Uticott, Mr. Hayden Phillip, Director of the Pure Unit of the Ministry of Works and Transport, all of our contractors represented here today, specially invited guests, and members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed my pleasure to welcome you to today's sod tuning for the Lady Hales Avenue Widening Project, which is phase one of the San Fernando Waterfront Rede Redevelopment Project. The government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago continues to remain committed to fulfilling the ultimate vision for prosperity laid out in the National Development Strategy for 2030. Ladies and gentlemen, in so doing, the city of San Fernando has been identified as an urban community rich with the potential to yield increased opportunities and improved conditions for living, leisure, and ecstatic development. At this point in time, it's indeed my pleasure to introduce to the pro podium the project manager, Mr. Hayden Phillip, who will provide today's project overview. Let's give him a warm welcome. Senator, the Honorable Rowan Sinanon, Minister of Works and Transport, the Honorable Faris Alwari, Attorney General, Member of Parliament for San Fernando West, Senator, the Honorable Kazim Hossein, Minister of Rural Development and Local Government, Honorable Adrian Leons, Parliamentary Secretary, Ministry of Works and Transport, Ms. Sonia Francis Yearwood, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Works, his Worship, Alderman Junior Grello, Mayor of San Fernando, Councillors, other members of the corporation, members of UDCOT, members of NIPDEC, specially invited guests, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I would like to ask the audience for a little bit of their imagination for a few seconds. So, Imagine a location with the aesthetics and infrastructure to gather, to live, to work, play, walk, run, shop, or simply watch the world go by. Imagine that location surrounded by the natural beauty and attraction of water and cool, salty tang of the ocean breeze. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the promise of the San Fernando Waterfront Redevelopment Project. And the Pure Unit is honored to be part of the delivery of this promise. In creating the civil works infrastructure for the San Fernando Waterfront Development Project, the Pure Unit is tasked with the design, construction supervision, project management of the following elements. Rienzi Curtin Pedestrian Overpass in the vicinity of the Embakade community, a boardwalk and bike path along Kings Wharf, the Rushwood Street extension, the connection to the Lady Hills Avenue, and of course, Lady Hills Avenue widening project, which we are here today to launch. The Lady Hills widening project focuses on extending the width of the carriageway of Lady Hills Avenue from Queen Street to Todd Street by approximately 13 meters. This is to accommodate four 3.3 meter lanes and shoulders designed to Ashto guidelines. This will significantly reduce the traffic congestion along this roadway now, as well as upon completion of the redevelopment works. There will also be the construction of a 45 meter diameter roundabout at the intersection of Lady Hills Avenue and Link Road. This is to improve traffic flows through that general area. There's also the construction of a new road, Route Avenue extension, to improve the traffic flows from the roundabout to and from Independence Square and Eastern San Fernando. In order to extend this carriageway, a 500 meter long rock armor embankment 
will be constructed along the coastline with widths varying from five meters to nine meters. Inland, use will be made of reinforced concrete retaining walls as well as mechanically stabilized earth walls with a modular block system. All roadways will be serviced with new culverts and box drains for enhanced drainage, while new sidewalks and street lighting will, approve, will improve vehicle and pedestrian safety. Construction works have been divided into two packages to be carried out simultaneously by Jasamco Pavers Limited and Kusals Construction Limited. The total cost of these packages is $70.49 million and the construction duration is approximately 12 months. A third package is being finalized, which is package three, which is the continuation of the Rushwood Street extension to connect to Lady Hills Avenue. This project, once again, PTA's successful use of local construction resources demonstrated through implementation of geotechnical investigation, topographical design, surveys, designs by the pure unit in conjunction with local consult consultants and representatives of the Ministry of Works and Transport. Provision of project management and construction supervision by the pure team, construction by local contractors, Josamco Pavers and Kusals, using local workers, the Pure team wishes to thank all our partners and their assistance to date, and we look forward to being with you in a year's time to celebrate the successful completion of our combined efforts. I thank you. Thank you very much, Hayden. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point in time, I'd like to invite to the podium His Worship Junior Rograllo, the Mayor of San Fernando, to bring some remarks. Let's give him a warm welcome, ladies and gentlemen. In the interest of time, permit me to forego the, the protocol list that was so eloquently presented by our Master of Ceremonies, if not necessarily in order. Uh, this is a very exciting morning for the city of San Fernando. Very, very exciting. And I speak on behalf of the citizens and the people who have been looking forward to this project. On social media this morning, one gentleman said, what's a turning ceremony? They're going to put up a, a sign saying this will start in 2021, and so on, so on, so on, nothing will happen. Well, I was very pleased when I heard two of the contractors say this morning, the project starting tomorrow, and this is why we're supposed to clap, because San Fernando will be looking forward to this. We're excited about this. This will provide opportunities, opportunities and benefits and progress, and this speaks about development. Uh, so I've been like this height, I've been hearing about the waterfront project. When the, when the MP's mother was president of the South Chamber, I've been hearing about this project. When Ray Diffenthaler and, Bob, and Bobby Montana and all those, those, those uh, persons who shaped the landscape of the city have been trying to get this project going, and they, they were not successful. I would like to commend the Minister of Works and our member of parliament for San Fernando West, Donald Faris al Rari, for pushing this project and making it happen. <laughs> their consistency, their drive, the energy. Every time I heard Faris speak, I heard about the waterfront. I started to get scared. I said, is this going to happen? And I'm very happy to be here this morning among this crowd and persons on the outside who are listening to this program that this is happening. We look forward to the success. We look forward to the achievement as we move forward. This carriageway as Mr. As Hayden out the line a while ago. For those of you who do not know, traffic coming from the deep south into San Fernando, you have two options. You take Sapero Street or, or this stretch here. There are two max, two water taxis that leave here every morning at 6 and 6.30, fully loaded with persons coming from around the city. And this is the main artery to get here. What we have done here, what we'll be doing here is providing positive options that will really decrease the, the traffic flow coming into the city. This is an exciting time for us. We are happy about this. Congratulations, Minister. Congratulations, MP. We look forward to this, and we welcome this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, next on the program, we have the Honorable Farah Salwari, Attorney General of Trinidad and Tobago, and elected Member of Parliament for San Fernando West. A longtime champion for the development of San Fernando on this particular project, Mr. Minister Alwari has been serving his constituency in a special way. 
his efforts towards strategizing and operationalizing these critical tasks, which has brought us to this moment, is something that cannot be understated. And we anticipate that this project will breathe new life and a new birth into San Fernando because of the beauty that comes with it. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point in time, I invite you to put your hands together as we welcome the Honorable Faris Alwari to bring today's address. Good morning, everyone. Your Worship, the Mayor, who is the first citizen of San Fernando, my honorable cabinet and parliamentary colleagues, the, I have to say this because he deserves special mention, the past mayor of San Fernando, the current uh, member of, of, of the cabinet who occupies rural development, local government, the Honorable Kazim Hussein, who is a champion of San Fernando in every sense possible. The distinguished members of this audience, including my dear and beloved mother, who um, has had a vision for this city as well. The gentlemen who have come with us from Udicott, from NIDCO, the members of the contracting fraternity, the icons of Siwa Kusal, Junior Sami, the equipment that you see on the street. I recognize Kiran here with us as well from the chamber, the greater chamber of San Fernando. San Fernando, this is our moment. Permit me to borrow Hayden's expression a while ago. He said, occupy your imagination for a moment but permit me to tease it just a little bit. If you saw the sign outside, you'll notice that we're here just next to King's Wharf. Not Queen's Wharf, which is in Port of Spain. We're at King's Wharf in San Fernando. And in San Fernando, San Fernandians amongst you except my mother, I challenge you to tell me that you know of a place called Plaza San Carlos. Most people don't know that at the end of the train line, there was Plaza San Carlos, a place where San Fernandians came, exquisite dining, entertainment, the original fets in San Fernando. They were carried out at the railway building, the Rodriguez building, they stood in decay for decades. And for decades, San Fernando has heard of a nebulous, unusual thing called the waterfront. Many a member of parliament has come in what I call a charade or a promise, boot on shovel, turning the sword on the waterfront. If you were to ask anyone what the constituent elements of the waterfront is, or are, or were supposed to be, you would have been hard pressed for details. I came as your member of parliament, promising a better life for San Fernando and for Trinidad and Tobago on two major issues. One is to treat with the scourge of crime, but I will acquit myself as attorney general on a different day. Two, to treat with the economy and the lives of the citizens of San Fernando and San Fernando West as its member of parliament. Those two issues are in fact very closely interrelated. And permit me in occupying your imagination as I have done with thousands of citizens in San Fernando to ask who in San Fernando at this moment in time will take their loved ones hands walk down our beautiful waterfront in its current condition, walk past the best use of space, which is 14 acres of a PTSC bus yard watching the sea, pumping sludge into the ocean, take a trip down past our first-rate state-of-the-art wharf, past our beautiful two-stacked containers for customs, walk past a PTSC articulation yard, Go down to the train line and feel safe. Who? Who amongst us? Who amongst us sees the wisdom of making sure that you don't have to go into traffic in two directions when you could have linked Rushwood Street into a development? 
So allow me to occupy your attention for a moment. Today's project is actually in the middle of a number of other projects. There's a gentleman standing at the back. His name is Tommy Chanona, Key Chanona Limited. He has been awarded the project already for the construction of one of our landmark projects. And I'll tell you about it this way. From the far stretch of our constituency at Sunset Cove, Sunset Ridge, to the far stretch of our constituency at Guaracara River, we have 8,000 people living in squatting conditions. In the far stretches of our community, we have had the highway to Point Fortin come to take life out of San Fernando. We have had little development in San Fernando, only really occupying the time when Mr. Manning was prime minister with what should have been our administrative complex and Sapper. And then after that, we went to sleep like Rip Van Winkle, not receiving our fair share of the pie because no member of parliament bothered to be a constant irritant in the cabinet, a constant irritant to the Minister of Finance to ensure that our developmental needs were met. And the vision for San Fernando is real as follows. Start off with the squatting communities and the regularization of hundreds of homes delivered to our most vulnerable people. How do you address inequality? How do you address the scourge of crime if you don't fix the most vulnerable first? Take a trip past the roundabout that is to be constructed by this project. And at that location, you will see that we have already cleared the Ministry of Work site for the occupation of 241 homes right at that site opposite Rudal Cemetery. Work your way forward. Get to the extension at Rushworth Street that this project delivers and ask yourself why governments after governments, members of parliament for San Fernando West after members of parliament for San Fernando West did not see the logic of connecting 100 feet of road from Rushworth Street to the waterfront. Why? Because when you get to the PTSC bus yard, that land, 14 acres of it, has been vested in Udicott. 14 acres of it has been awarded already to Hafiz Karamat Engineering Services Limited. $750 million of housing and commercial development have already been anchored by way of public-private partnership arrangement. And this week, if you pass now, you will see the hoarding being constructed. Come a little lower down to this site and ask yourself why the largest hospital serving the largest basin in the country has no car park. Then talk to Tommy Chanona, who has received the award Key Chanona Limited for 1,000 car parks that start in this month. Where would your water taxi parking go? Where will your boardwalk parking go if not in a thousand car parks? Take a trip down. Come closer to our wharf. Know that the contract has already been secured for the redevelopment of a fishing port. Ice storage, jetties, marine police, built around a thriving community. Picture and tease your imagination with fish fry, with restaurants, with cold storage, with dignity for our fisher folk. Now, ladies and gentlemen, go to what was the waterfront. 3.8 hectares of land previously being developed without a certificate of environmental clearance. Picture on that 3.8 hectares our version of movie town our version of Invaders Bay, our version of hotel facilities, conference centers, already in the safe hands of Van Org as the contract is alive and well and kicking. Now for a moment, connect the wharf straight down to Hatters and picture our version of a boardwalk lit with lights, 
music playing, where you hold your loved one's hand and you walk from Hatters all the way up to Plaza San Carlos, which is being renovated courtesy the Cuban government as they are experts at restoration. As I recognize the chairman of NITCO here, sorry, the executive manager of NITCO here, Mr. Gardner, and he will tell you meal flow was developed by the Cubans. The restoration of Whitehall, Stolmeyer's Castle, President's House that Port of Spain got, San Fernando gets. But don't stop there. Come to South and come to Skinner Park. Gifted in 1926, last coat of paint effectively in 1986. And ask yourself, where was our Queen's Park Savannah? Why were we given no turn at the wheel? Take a trip across the housing development at Carlton Lane, the extension at Roy J, the extension at Olera Heights, the redevelopment of Embarcadere, and ask yourself why no MP agitated for that? Our boardwalk. I, as a scout, grew up swimming in that water, swimming to Farallon Rock, dragon boating, racing. Gene Wilkes, Rodney Wilkes, our cyclists and our runners, our squash players, never had their fair turn at the national wheel, even though they excelled, because they didn't have the dignity of facilities and vision. This all sounds good. A politician on a platform on the eve of an election. Sounds like your classic mama guy. So why now? Why today? It's because as Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs of Trinidad and Tobago, I know that a project will be stopped if you don't have your Certificate of Environmental Clearance. I know as we stand in a COVID country today where our country has been locked down with borders closed for the first time in the history of Trinidad and Tobago. I know as a member of the cabinet watching the price of oil plummet in 2015 and 2016, a loss of 96% of our revenue that you cannot achieve a vision if you don't go through procurement, you don't award the contract, you don't have the financing, you don't have the stakeholder improvement, and you don't have your certificate of environmental clearance. In other words then, making it real requires locking down all of the regulatory and procurement cycles. That's why right now, that's why today, that's why this project and this launch has had no precedent in San Fernando because we are not with a minister with a foot on a shovel turning some sod. Instead, we have Josamku. Instead, we have Kusals. Instead, you can see the equipment on the road. You've seen the notices in the newspaper saying, we apologize for the inconvenience of development as we take San Fernando forward with the reality of a project. I've not even yet told you that the San Fernando Magistrates Court turns sod next week, God willing. I've not told you that the family court in San Fernando at the St. Joseph's Convent Clooney Building, thank you, Mr. Gardner, is ready for launch. I've not yet told you that the redevelopment of the Magistrates Court as it fell into its problems with the earthquake is intended for the creation of our criminal division next to our civil division. I've not yet told you that we have surveyed every inch of squatting land in San Fernando and that we have a technique to redevelop lives and that we have built and will conclude hundreds of homes for the most disadvantaged. You see, ladies and gentlemen, the combination of projects yields close to 15,000 jobs in identifiable projects. I don't stand before you as a political leader in the current domain promising a plan that has no specificity. I can tell you certificate of environmental clearance, contract awarded, and my version and the PNM's version and the government's version of the waterfront has 
33 zero identifiable projects, all underwritten, all secured. It is that combination of effort that allows our city its chance at the wheel. It is that combination of hope, vision, prosperity that allows us to make it real. Permit me to thank my colleague, the Honorable Rohan Sinanan, for being my constant agitator for San Fernando's fair share of the wheel. Permit me to recognize the Honorable Adrian Leons as he's come to give the backup driving support as an engineer himself into that ministry. Permit me to recognize the Honorable Permanent Secretary who is indefatigable in her efforts for the Ministry of Works and Transport. Now you know why I did all your law for you. It's payback. Thank you for your support, Honorable Ministers, Honorable Permanent Secretary. To the contractors who have proved that tendering results in excellent value for money prices and who have a track record of performance behind them, San Fernando will be watching. We long for our walk along that boardwalk and our trip out on our jetties where our scouts return to their scout house and our dragon boat racing and our cycle track and our lives in San Fernando are born into reality. Ladies and gentlemen, technically I wasn't your feature speaker, but as member of parliament for San Fernando West, I had to steal the thunder. I recognize in this audience icons of education. I recognize Dr. Fayad Ali sitting at the back with us a man who has taught over 45,000 people in San Fernando. His only difficulty being that it was at Naparima College and not Presentation College. But what can I say? We love our NAPS people too as well. I recognize so many players from industry, from life, and from commerce sitting with us. And as I end, to his worship, the mayor, and the hardest working crew under the Council of the Corporation, Riyad Ali, Nigel Coutier, Nigam Joseph, or San Fernando West in particular, Michael Johnson of Marabella, a little bit far removed this morning, but part of us nonetheless. And as I end, the Honorable Haji Kazim Hussein, a man whose heart, if you rip it out, is stamped San Fernando. I have walked the streets of this city with your brother and with you, and your father's name lives in everyone's memory as a mayor of repute, and your family, dear sir, have been students of service. Last word, as my mother is in the audience, mom, thank you for the vision at the San Fernando chamber as it was in its day. It was the agitation begun under you in particular that I have the privilege today to bring to life. What better form than to have generations together? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The Urban Development Corporation of Trinidad and Tobago Limited is pleased to announce that the SUD has been tuned for the commencement of works on the San Fernando Waterfront Redevelopment Project. The redevelopment of the San Fernando Waterfront Project is a major deliverable of Vision 2013 National Strategy, a planning policy established by the Ministry of Planning and Development. This is undoubtedly one of this country's largest regeneration projects for the second largest city in Trinidad. Udicott was engaged as one of the executing agencies to oversee the project. In April 2017, this initiative of Vision 2030 had the opportunity to become a tangible reality when the government of Trinidad and Tobago approved the implementation plan for phase one of this redevelopment project. Developmental initiatives to be undertaken will include San Fernando Waterfront Coastal Wall, San Fernando Waterfront Reclamation Project, Lady Hills Mixed Use Development, a fishing facility, San Fernando Waterfront Public Car Park, Plaza San Carlos Historic District and Lady Hills Avenue Widening Project and Boardwalk. 
The San Fernando Waterfront Coastal Wall is envisaged to be a powerful defense system to protect the reclaimed land and the activities of this project. With a meticulous and diligent planning team, current and future seaside and climatic conditions will be taken into consideration to ensure the longevity of this defense mechanism. The Lady Hills mixed-use development will boast of a prominent waterfront scenery to residential, commercial, boardwalk and parking spaces for the citizens of TNT. A fishing facility which will be strategically positioned at Hatters Beach and will feature amenities such as a jetty, jib crane, chiller rooms, scale monitors, cold storage units, fish cleaning areas, net mending areas, engine repair areas, office areas and lockers. Residents will have the opportunity to make purchases and establish their business in a state-of-the-art retail fish vending market. The San Fernando Waterfront Reclamation Project will seek to reclaim 3.8 hectares of coastline at Kings Wharf, in addition to a previously reclaimed 1.6 hectares to provide accommodation for a hotel, harbor, a new water taxi terminal, and an area dedicated for our very own Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard and Customs and Excise personnel. The San Fernando Waterfront Public Car Park will provide safe, secure, convenient parking for commuters as well as staff and visitors of the San Fernando General Hospital and San Fernando Teaching Hospital. The Plaza San Carlos Historic District will be restored to represent both its modern and historical glory. This renovation will inject its true purpose as an arts and culture district in this southern prime area. The Lady Hills Avenue widening project and boardwalk will be executed as three sub-projects by the Ministry of Works and Transport. The Ministry's program for upgrading roads efficiency unit, Pure Unit, is responsible for the widening of Lady Hills Avenue to a four-lane dual carriageway and the establishment of a boardwalk along Kings Wharf Central and South Nodes. The Ministry's Coastal Protection Unit is responsible for the repair of the seawall along the Kings Wharf Central Node. This transformative project will reap benefits for the informal settlers of Kings Wharf North, fisherfolk, commuters, business owners, cultural curators, and even recreational participants. The Government of Trinidad and Tobago looks forward to enhancing the economic, social, and cultural vitality of the city of San Fernando. We're proud to deliver this long-awaited redevelopment project, ensuring particular adherence to international best practices and standards to provide quality infrastructure and a standard of living for you. Udicott. Signed. Sealed. Delivered. Thank you very much once again to the Attorney General for his rousing vision for San Fernando's future. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping you're hearing the music in the background. I can't hear it center stage. And I'm seeing a lot of mature folks in the audience. I'm seeing smiles. So I'm quite sure people are familiar with this song and this particular singer. Her name is Calypso Rose going down San Fernando. And we thought we're bringing a special man to the podium, so we're going to lift the tempo a little bit here. And indeed, it's my pleasure to introduce to the podium the Minister of Works and Transport, Senator the Honorable Rohan Sinanan, who began his tenure over three years with the intent on creating inroads that would lead to an improved infrastructure in Trinidad and Tobago. His mantra has been, I will do more with less. And I think he has delivered. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give him a lusty round of applause as we invite a man of action and a man who has been working to improve Trinidad and Tobago. Can we get a little more volume on that song, please? Paris. And let me let me get the protocols correct. The mayor of San Fernando is worship and a very good friend, a very hard working mayor, and someone who I know would be very happy with this 
Project, Your Worship Junior Regrello, Your Honorable Faris Alwari, the Attorney General, and another gentleman who have been nagging me for the last four and a half years on this project, and Member of Parliament for San Fernando West, Senator the Honorable Kazim Hussein, again, another Southerner who I'm sure will be very proud this morning for his part in the, on this project. My colleague, the Honorable Adrian Leons, Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Works and Transport. I always refer to her as the best permanent secretary in the public service, Ms. Sonia Francis Yearwood, my permanent secretary at the Ministry of Works and Transport, other permanent secretaries, councillors of the San Fernando Borough Corporation, CEO of the San Fernando Corporation, Mr. Indarjit Singh, Mr. Hayden Phillip, the director of PIO, and for those of you who don't know, Hayden probably built about 75% of the roads in this country, both the local roads and the highways and the main roads. And Hayden, I think this country owes you and your unit a lot for the great work you all have did. <laughs> Mr. Junior Sami, director of Jusamco Pavers Limited, staff, and also Mr. Siunar and Kusal, and I saw members of his staff here as well, special invited guests. I know we have members of the San Fernando Chamber here, and I, I really thank you for gracing us with your presence here. Members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, I think today, really and truly, is a significant milestone in San Fernando. And I say that because I have heard a lot about the San Fernando Waterfront Project, not being from San Fernando, but I have seen administration and administration talk about this great San Fernando Waterfront Project. For those of you, um, there was a gentleman called Barindra Sinanan. He too spoke about this project. And you can go back to the late, uh, one of our seniors, Errol Mahabir. He also had a vision for the San Fernando project. Diane Sukaran, and very recently, Carol Sipasan Bechan also turned this out. Every MP that passed through San Fernando had a vision for this San Fernando waterfront project. Mr. Manning, in his time, actually started something in San Fernando. Unfortunately, the San Fernando project, waterfront project, never got off. I've, I'm told that there was an application for a CC some time ago, which was never followed through. So despite the sod turnings and so that took place on this site, I think it was two sod turnings prior to today, there was really never a real intention to follow through on this project. Because Faris spoke about the plans, we can actually show you today physical aspects of this project, a couple of which have already been awarded. We have on hand our CC. It means that we are serious about this project. We have two contractors here on site today, and they are going to start, well, two projects on the, the infrastructure aspect. We also have the contractor for the housing development project. We also have the project, the contractor for the car park on the project. We're talking close to in excess of a billion dollars in contracts already awarded on this San Fernando project. So this is real. This is not boots on shovel as far as describe it and a big signboard. When we leave here today, we have contractors on site. This is real. This is real. Finally, San Fernando. I know Faris have been pushing the Ministry of Works for the longest while, and I had to tell Faris, hold a little strain. When we start, we're going to finish. And like many of the projects, the major projects that this government promised the country in our manifesto in 2015, we are getting it done. And we are getting it done the right way and at the right price. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is just one of the major projects that we have embarked on to develop this country. The benefits of this project is significant in terms of ongoing jobs for the community, because you are talking about, Faris said, 30 points. Each one of these points will have hundreds of employees. All can't be done at the same time, but I can see going forward for at least the next five years, the construction boom in San Fernando based on this waterfront project. Employment, business activities, I'm sure very soon we may not be seeing Junior at the Hyatt in Port of Spain on a Friday evening. I think he will choose to stay in San Fernando because you saw what is coming to San Fernando. You are on par with any developed country, any part of the world. It's first class facilities that you're getting in San Fernando. A lot of people might think this is a dream and this is why we insisted that we're not going to turn this sod. We're not going to create any impression that something is happening until the people of San Fernando can pass and actually see it happening. There are some countries that, you know, people have been fooled for so long that they just don't, they give up on hope. They feel it's just politicians coming and talking. San Fernando, this is your turn. We are coming down San Fernando, and that's why we choose that song that Ruth sang so long ago for you. The government has identified San Fernando have been lacking, and we decided to do something about it. When we do a project like this, we look at the holistic approach to it, the infrastructure. And that is why we have first starting is the major road improvement, which is done by the pure unit of the Ministry of Works and the Coastal Department. They would have been working on this project for the last two years. So they have all the designs and they are ready to go. We also have the PTSC terminal under the Ministry of Works and they, I understand they're about 90% completed on their new site. So they will be relocating, I think, by the end of this month, the end of next month to make way for the, 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 yeah, the, the housing development project there. Um, I understand the contractor have started to hold off, do the soil tests and everything. And that, again, should create a couple hundred jobs. But this government went further than that. We looked at all the areas for development in Trinidad and Tobago. And I'm very happy to say, we spoke again about a port in Maruga, another project. Recently, I told um, the people in Maruga that I'm coming down to turn the sod for the port. And they said, no, don't come. I said, why? They said, because two MPs did that before, and it never happened. Similar to the experience in San Fernando. And I had to tell them, Give me two weeks, and we're not only coming to turn the sod, but like this project, we have all our uh, environmental clearance. We have all our designs, and we also have a contractor and a contract awarded. So when we turn the sod this time, the next day, you will see construction taking place. This is no mama guy. And they could not believe that. They told me they have to see it to believe it. The port in Maruga is going to become a reality in about two weeks. Again, something that we have been working on, because these things take time. I could not understand how you could have turned sod twice before, and you don't even have a design for what you're going to build. It's sad. This government is not about fooling the people. We spoke about a cure up interchange, and they, they thought that that couldn't happen within a year, 14 months. We delivered on that. In Maruga, you just don't go and build a port. You have to put in the infrastructure, just like this project. The Pure Unit, again, started on the Maruga upgrade road. It's an international standard road. We started on that about two years ago, and we're about 90% completed. We plan everything, build the infrastructure. Now you've got to reach to the port. The port is about to start in two weeks. I understand yesterday the contractor um, started to mobilize, and very soon, just like San Fernando, that part of the island will see growth. Because when you build a port, everything develops around the port. Job creation, new businesses. The Galiota port, we've heard about this Galiota port. It starts stop. Very recently, NITCO had gotten the approval from the cabinet 
to start the negotiations with the contractor on the port in Galeuta, another end of the island that we expect to see significant growth. The road infrastructure, again, the pure unit, have started the design to make sure that by the time we're ready with that port, second phase in Galeuta, that the road to get to Mayaro will be of international standard. Toko. This government spoke about a port in Toko that will bring Tobago and Trinidad at its closest point together. A lot of people thought that was a pie in the sky project. The people on the East Coast. One guy told me his father spoke to him about that since he was about six years old. When he told me that he was 76 years old. Could you imagine the people of that and the East Coast hearing about something 50, 60 years, and now they're actually seeing the reality where the consultation is almost finished. We have to get the, the environmental approval. We are on the way to getting that. But more important, what they are seeing, they are seeing a highway from Valencia to Toko, a project that should have been started about 50 years ago. And if you go on the Valencia Junction now, I think within two weeks we should complete the first package on that. Complete the first package. This is not about turning sudden election coming and mama guy and anybody. We have seven contractors now on that project from Valencia Junction to the Toko Road. Once we finish those seven or eight packages, that continues all the way to the port in Toko. The infrastructure is on the way. A highway from Valencia to Toko. It's not just about talk. If you go on the East Coast, we spoke about a highway from Komoto to Manzalena, and that leads to Mayaro. We have construction on the way there, and the pure unit, again, is going to take up the road from Sandy Grande to Manzalena. Everything is happening. It's not about talk and talk and talk. That is how this government decides to develop this country, put in proper infrastructure and put in opportunities for people. So just like San Fernando, who have gotten the largest project in redevelopment ever attempted in Trinidad and Tobago. That is what we're here to turn this out for this morning, the largest redevelopment program in the history of Trinidad and Tobago. Every area in Trinidad, east, west, north, and south, we're doing the same thing. In Labri, we are negotiating now for the dry dock facility. That will create thousands of jobs. And again, side by side with that, is a highway from San Fernando to Point Fortin. So things are happening. Unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, a lot of people will tell you the government ain't doing nothing and the government ain't doing nothing. The reason why they're saying that is because every day you don't pick up the papers and see a scandal. And unfortunately in this country, only when we see a scandal happening, then we pay attention to it. Could you imagine four major highways happening all at the same time? Port facilities, interchange, road paving program, over 96 projects under the major bridge and landslip program happening. When last you hear about corruption or mismanagement or overrun and things like that? The reason for it, the prime minister monitors all his ministers. And you cannot go to that cabinet table and feel you could just beat around with numbers and figures. Our prime minister is very experienced. And the entire cabinet have committed themselves to use that phrase, doing more with less and working in the interests of the citizens of this country. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago for the, comp for the all the efforts and the confidence that he has placed in me as Minister of Works and the staff headed by our permanent secretary, Ms. Sonia Francis, and the faith he have put into the staff of the Ministry of Works and Transport to allow us to handle probably 12 of the largest projects in Trinidad and Tobago. I am happy to say we have delivered on most of them within time, within budget, and doing more with less. So I want to personally thank him 
And I want to thank the staff of the Ministry of Works and Transport for giving me the support in order for us to achieve those projects that we've promised the citizens of this country. Ladies and gentlemen, very soon, this country will be faced with a general election. And this is not a political speech, so I wouldn't tell you who to vote for. All I can ask you to do is do the right thing. Make the right choice. Because we want all these projects to continue. As I said, this is a development program for the entire country, east, west, north, south, and even central. Tobago has their own development program. We have a marina coming in Tobago. The Ministry of Works, uh, we are actually building a new airport in Tobago. How long you heard about an airport in Tobago? Hundred, I mean, the airport in Tobago started last week. Again, no big fanfare. We actually started the new airport in Tobago last week. And very soon, Tobago will speak about that airport. So, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to thank you all here for coming out here this morning and for holding the feet in San Fernando. This is your time now. Embrace it, and let's make the right choice whenever that election is called. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point in time, I would like to introduce Ms. Daniil Alexander. She's a project officer in the Pure Unit to say thank you. Uh, putting together events and projects of this magnitude is not an easy tasks, uh, task, and it requires a lot of teamwork, and saying thank you is also very important. So let's give her a warm welcome as she identify all of the key stakeholders that would have partnered with us to ensure that today and the project moving forward is a success. Salutations. Good morning, everyone. It is my pleasure to express sincere thanks on behalf of the Honorable Minister and staff of the peer unit of the Ministry of Works and Transport to all those who have contributed in any way to the successful execution of this certainty. Firstly, a special thank you to the esteemed following individuals for their attendance. The Honorable Faris Alwari, Attorney General and Member of Parliament for San Fernando West, Senator the Honorable Kazim Hossein, Minister of Rural Development and Local Government, the Honorable Adrian Leons, Parliamentary Secretary, Ministry of, Ministry of Works and Transport, Member of Parliament for Laventil East Mova, Mrs. Sonia Francis Yearwood, Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Works and Transport, other Permanent Secretaries, his Worship Alderman, Junior Regrello, Mayor of San Fernando, Councillor Nagam Joseph for Spring, Springvale Paradise, Mr. Indarjit Singh, CEO of San Fernando City Corporation, Ms. Tamika Charles Phillips, CEO of Udicott. We would like to thank you so much for your attendance. Secondly, we like to extend a special thank you to the heads of various stakeholder organizations represented here today. The chairman of Uricot, Mr. Noel Garcia, the acting director of Coastal Protection Unit, Mr. Kerry Shepard, the acting general manager of NIBDEC, Mr. Jabari Kozier. A heartfelt thank you for all your assistance. We wish to thank the contractors, Jusamko Pavers Limited, who will be working on package one and Kusas Construction Limited, who will be working on package two for their assistance in all the equipment they provided seen here today. Your efforts to the Ministry of Works and Transports were key in the successful execution of this event. And we would like to thank, sorry, and we, will, and we look forward to your timely execution of the works in accordance with all specifications. This we express our sincerest gratitude. Thank you to the management and executive staff of NIPDEC for the effective handling of all contract and procurement matters for this project. 
I wish to thank the Corporate Communications Unit of the Ministry of Woods and Transport for all their efforts behind the scenes in managing seating, invitations, media coverage, and every other aspect that is seen or represented here today to make this venture such a great success. Also, to the staff of the San Fernando City Corporation, who always do their best to accommodate the peer unit in all the ministry's endeavors for the Lady Hills widening, for, for the Lady Hills Avenue widening project. Without your patience, assistance, and understanding, this turning would not have been successful. Thank you all. To the members of the media in attendance, and to you ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Honorable Minister and staff of the Ministry of Works and Transport, thank you for attending this event. The start, the start turning of the Lady Hills Avenue project, we thank God for, for another successful event diligently undertaken by the pure unit of the Ministry of Works and Transport. Ladies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention. to commemorate this significant project that will provide new opportunities for tourism, improved transportation, and the expansion of the business sector in San Fernando. Indeed, the widening of the Lady Hills Avenue is only the beginning of great things to come for San Fernando. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point in time, we move to the official solitary ceremony, and my colleague, Ms. Kippy Graves, will invite our senior officials to the front, where we will officially to sign. DJ, over to you, and we would like to request all sound.
Dublok mi, Dublok mi.